Nestled in the beautiful city of Tiruvananthapuram, Kerala, is a unique institute which has been serving the people of not only Kerala but India for the last four decades. The Sri Chitra Tirunal Institute for Medical Sciences and Technology. The institute, from its modest beginning, has grown to be a major healthcare provider in the country. You know, in 1972, our uh, Last Maharaja Chitra Tirunal, that was his Shastiyapta Bhurti, 60th birthday. So the royal family wanted to celebrate and uh, they decided to build a speciality hospital block in a medical college campus. Achyadamayran was our chief minister here. And he had already put this uh, hospital building as a Chitra Medical Center as it was called. So why not make it into specialities hospital? for cardiology, neurology, for which uh, we had no, hardly any facilities in Kerala. And most of the common people cannot afford to go to Bombay, Madras and so on. And also the, we must promote some research. Medical research was hardly done. So that was the time I got this invitation from Achyadamayran, so I came here. And uh, the building was there. It was, uh, there was no furniture, no uh, equipment, only five employees. Uh, so we started organizing for this, precisely for this, cardiology and neurology, two specialities. Uh, and research in technology, which would be essential for the practice of these specialities. That is how we started here. And this also helped us in the sense that the concept, medicine and technology, if you bring it together under one roof, you can produce very impressive results. The institute combines a super speciality hospital, a biomedical technology research wing, and a public health training facility. The institution has three mandates. Uh, the most important one is research and development of technologies for medical devices. This is to facilitate the indigenous production of medical devices and to bring down the uh, import costs of these expensive medical devices from Western countries. Our second mandate is to provide high quality, super specialized care for patients with cardiac and neurological disorders. And the third is to uh, develop human resource in these areas and to provide advanced training and super speciality training for doctors as well as public health specialists. It is the synergy and collaboration between the three wings of the Institute that has been instrumental in defining the high quality of care and reputation that the Institute has built. One of the early successes of the Biomedical Technology Wing has been the development of the Sri Chitra Heart Valve and the Blood Bag. Both technologies contributed to healthcare affordability to the common man. The aim of the BMT Wing has been to develop through research innovative healthcare technologies that translate into high quality patient care. Indigenization of modern medical technology has been an important mandate of the wing. PhD programs to promote research in biomedical science and engineering are offered. The wing also has internationally accepted medical device testing and evaluation processes. The Achyuta Menon Center for Health Science Studies focuses on public health training, programs to train professionals who would plan, evaluate, manage and inform public health and policy are conducted. At the core of the institute is the Sri Chitra Tirunal Hospital, a super specialized referral center. Patients from all over India are referred to this hospital. The hospital provides state-of-the-art health care. A dedicated team of doctors, clinicians and nursing staff along with the latest diagnostic and surgical tools has given the hospital a world-class reputation. Every day, hundreds of needy patients find care and cure within the corridors of this hospital. All departments have the best expertise 
and provide high-end healthcare in a wide range of subspecialities. Patients suffering from various neurological diseases come to the Department of Neurology, which comprises different subspecialities. A comprehensive care centre for movement disorders, comprehensive care centre for sleep disorders, comprehensive stroke care centre, the R. Madhavan Nair Centre for Comprehensive Epilepsy Care and Cognition and Behavioural Neurology. The department provides holistic care from diagnosis, investigation, evaluation, treatment and follow-up. In 2015, there were 6,500 registrations, 3,200 admissions and over 30,000 review consultations. Today, I am fit, 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 I हॉस्पिटल में नहीं अपने घर पर बैठी हूं क्योंकि आप यहां पे जितने भी लोग हैं सभी लोग इतने अच्छे हैं The comprehensive care program for movement disorders was started in 1996 The first deep brain simulation surgery or DBS was carried out in 1998 this is one of the rare hospitals in India where DBS surgery is undertaken. We have been regularly doing deep brain stimulation surgeries as well as other functional neurosurgeries for various movement disorders like Parkinson's disease, dystonia, essential tremor, etc. And we have also helped many other centers in India to establish comprehensive care programs for movement disorders. Under the Department of Neurology, we have a comprehensive stroke care unit which caters to patients with acute stroke and also patients who are having subacute stroke where the patient needs detailed evaluation. The comprehensive stroke care unit has got a seven bedded uh, stroke ICU which caters to patients with acute stroke when they come and where patients are given a clot lysing medicine for thrombolysis and also we have got facility for giving mechanical thrombectomy. The Department of Neurosurgery has operation theatres that are well equipped and state-of-the-art devices including image guidance, stereotaxy, high-end microscopes, intra-op electrophysiological monitoring devices, CUSA, pneumatic high-speed drills and intraoperative ultrasound. The approach to provide world-class neurosurgical care and advanced neurosurgical knowledge through research and innovation and to ensure the best academic environment for neurosurgical education makes this department of international standards. The hospital serves as a tertiary referral center for cardiovascular and thoracic diseases. The major divisions of the cardiology department are adult cardiology, cardiac electrophysiology, and pediatric cardiology. Adult cardiology division deals with coronary intervention, structural heart disease, and cardiac valve interventions. The cardiac electrophysiology division deals with the management of cardiac arrhythmias and sudden cardiac death. About 370 ablations and electrophysiological procedures and 300 device implantations were done by the department in 2015. The Pediatric Cardiology Division provides interventional and diagnostic services to the entire spectrum of congenital heart disease.
ഈ ചിത്രം എന്ന് പറയുന്ന എല്ലാ ഇതിൻ്റെ എങ്ങനെയാണ് നടത്തിപ്പാര് എല്ലാവർക്കും ഞങ്ങൾ താങ്ക്സ് പറയുന്നു The department provides affordable care without compromising on quality. It has gained its reputation in areas like coronary surgery, valve repair, aortic surgery, endovascular procedures and neonatal surgery. Jani jani es papa ite se na papa jani te na papa The Imaging Science and Interventional Radiology Department caters to both the Cardiology and the Neurology Departments. The Sri Chitra Hospital is one of the few public hospitals in the country with high-end imaging equipment and is able to provide cutting-edge patient care and research. The Department of Radiology has recently acquired the high-end Three Tesla MRI scan. Over the years, Sri Chitra has achieved a good reputation for high quality patient care, and this has been achieved not only because we offer highly skilled services of trained doctors, but also because of our committed and dedicated team of nursing and other staff. Once a patient is admitted in Sri Chitra, the burden of taking care of the patient is completely lifted off from the shoulders of patient's relatives. Being a referral specialized hospital, patients often enter with grave and confusing problems. Counselors and other medical professionals help to make the maze of the medical experience easier. Patients on admission are assessed for economic status and charged according to their ability. Every year about 11,000 patients get admitted in Sri Chitra. and most of them are from kerala but we also have patients from uh, different parts of the country of these uh, we charge patients according to their socio economic background and about 60% of patients get some form of subsidy or the other and this ranges from 10% to uh, 60% and about 10% of patients get totally free treatment about 4.3% of patients the free treatment is provided exclusively by sri chitra and in the remaining it is through the health schemes of the government but a total of 70% of patients get some form of subsidized treatment or the other so which is a great boon to a lot of patients from the marginalized sections of the society patam thaisile aadhi surgery rendamade 1989 il nan 95 il vendum melun cheyadu vendum 96 il cheyadu pa 2016 il vendum melun cheyadu treatment ga free aayirun idu varaya free enna aanu vera paisa enna aayirilla the hospital by providing human and affordable health care without compromising on quality has provided human service to the nation over the years health care costs have gone up considerably the rising cost of equipment consumables the rising salaries and the need for infrastructure development are posing great challenges to our uh, financial resources our annual budget is of uh, is around 264 crore indian rupees which is approximately 40 million us dollars of this 100 crore indian rupees that is approximately 15 million us dollars is provided by the government of india as grant made we generate an equal amount through our hospital services but that still leaves us with a deficit of 64 crore indian rupees which is approximately 10 million us dollars The hospital has built a reputation as a competent, socially responsible institute contributing to the vision of healthcare for all in our country. The development of an institution like a hospital requires a lot of money, requires a lot of effort and requires a lot of participation and cooperation from a large number of people and institutions. We are hoping that uh, we will be able to develop this hospital into a really great institution we have started the initial work and we are uh, expecting that with uh, participation by a number of different groups of people we will be able to really uh, make a dent in this important field Today, 
as the institute enters its fifth decade. To continue its services, it needs support and contributions from society.